Um, okay, share the screen. Um, so the peace, the peace of God. Why is it that sometimes we lack the peace of God? Now, as true believers, um, and despite so many truths and promises, uh, we sometimes walk with our peace. So let's be real. This is going to be a very real down-to-earth message. Sometimes uh, in different type areas of our lives, at different times of our lives, there are moments where we may feel anxiety, fear, restlessness, even tired. Now, some people experience these things, and I'm specifically talking about believers, because they may have some serious issues, serious circumstances going on in their lives. They may have health issues. They may have financial issues, family issue. And these are all very, very real. Now, these are the types of things that sometimes cause us to be temporarily disconnected from God's promises, especially from peace. Okay. Now, we're going to look at this a little bit further. Now, Scripture tells us that God is a God of peace. Our Savior Yeshua is the Prince of Peace. And we have the Gospel of Peace. His presence. In His presence, He produces peace. So God definitely wants us to have peace. But what else does God of peace want us to do? That's very important. So obviously he wants us to release everything to him. Now, how do we do it? Once again, what does the God of peace want us to do? We're going to have a look at five different times in scripture where God is identified specifically as the God of peace. So Let's see what he wants us to do, because there's always a purpose and a message of what he wants us to do when he calls himself the God of peace. So I'm just going to let feeling in there and we'll resume. First thing, God wants to be with us. Romans 15, 33. Now the God of peace be with you all. I mean, very important. This is once again, one of five times that God identifies himself as the God of peace. This is the first one. What does he want? He wants to be with us. Number two, he wants to crush Satan. Romans 16, 20. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that, once again, very important. The second time that the Lord God Almighty identifies himself as a God of peace, he wants us to crush. He wants to crush Satan in our lives. Let's look at the third one. God wants to encourage us. Philippians 4.9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Once again, very important. That's the third time that God Almighty identifies himself as the God of peace, and he wants to encourage us. The next one, point number four. God wants to sanctify us. First Thessalonians 5, verse 23. Now, may God of peace self sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be performed blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Powerful scripture. Very, very powerful scripture. Once again, this is the fourth time that God identifies as the God of peace and he wants to sanctify us. The final time. In Hebrews 13, verses 20 to 21, God wants to make us complete. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, 
through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Now, that's very, very important. Now, before I continue with the other messages, I want to take a moment because the message here is that God also wants us to trust him. His peace comes when we trust him. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes to share a story with you before we go on to the next slides. Now, this is a true story of a soldier in World War II who, believe it or not, and some people who've got a military background, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to um, relate to this. Um, in World War II, especially when they were very much in the offensive in the latter stage of World War II, whenever, whenever um, generals, including General Patton, and he was specifically mentioned, would be going through <clears throat> different parts of Europe, there would have to be soldiers that would walk in front of the Jeeps, 20 feet, 30 feet, 50 feet ahead of him. It would be probably three or six soldiers that would be walking, but to see if there were any landmines before the general's Jeep would safely cross over. Now, one of these young soldiers was, of course, a believer in Jesus Christ, very passionate for the Lord, always trusted in him. And despite his young age, not only physically, biologically, but even in his faith, he knew in his heart that he really had to just release everything to God. He would receive that peace. Now, he did that job for nearly one year, not only with General Patton, but other generals as well. All the other people that were with him through that course of, the, of that year, those 12 months, they all died because they would step on their minds, they would trigger them, and, of course, they would blow up and they would lose their lives. But he remained, and people would just tell him, and, and they were, I don't like using this word fascinated because we know what that means, but they were intrigued with him. How do you do it? And he looked in total peace. His response was, once again, he would quote scriptures about God's peace. We'll look at some of these very shortly. And he would also say, but you know what? This is why I also have peace, because if I know that I'm walking one day in front of any general's Jeep and I step on a mine and I hear that click, he said, it makes no difference because that very moment I will be in the presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be home with the Lord. And that ministered to so many other soldiers. It was unbelievable. And many came to Christ because of him. He's still alive. He's 98 years old. And he's still praising God and in total peace. So this is an incredible story of the trust that he had in the Lord. He released everything, his very life before him. And he just had God's peace. And that ministered to others. That is an incredible testimony and a lesson to us of how we should be trusting the Lord. When we trust the Lord, when we release things to him, we receive his peace. So a very, very important um, testimony. And of course, his main scripture was one that we'll look at shortly. So I want to encourage you as well and look at some other promises that God tells us about peace. Ephesians 6.15, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We touched on that early on. There is a God of peace. There is the Prince of peace. And that there is the gospel of peace. His word gives us peace like no one else can give us. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because why? Because he trusts in you. Very important. Philippians 4, verses 5 to 7. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, 
which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. John 14, verses 26 to 27. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives it. Do I give it to you? Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is Messiah telling us this, you know, that his peace he gives us. It's an incredible promise that we need to embrace. Some final thoughts. It's very important about the next scripture that I'm going to share with everyone in Luke that Yeshua brings us peace, but with that comes also salvation. With that also comes his guidance as well. Luke 1, verses 77 to 79, and we'll finish with this. To give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high he has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness, and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Once again, an incredible promise that salvation is aligned with the peace and that only comes from him. I want to remind everyone as well how much Yeshua emphasized on peace as well. He always stated, peace be with you, when he was greeting or visiting someone. Even after his crucifixion, when the disciples were afraid and were hiding, the first thing he says when he appears before them, peace be with you. Then when he sent out the disciples again, he said, peace be with you, time and time and time again. My question and challenge to all of us, including myself, will we receive his peace today? Will we embrace it? Will we thank him for it? So it's a, I know I shared quite a few scriptures. Um, I'll just stop sharing now. But I think it's, it's very, very important. It's an important message of peace because peace is seriously lacking all over the world. We see so many distractions. We see so many events around the world. We see the downfall of morality we see economic strife even in israel we're seeing multiple attacks again uh into israel we'll even finish up with a praise and worship song you know focusing on israel but uh it's also in our very backyards there's uh calamity disruption we're seeing an apostasy in the church we're seeing deception everywhere what we need is the lord's peace so let's trust him Let's release things to him. And I'm even talking to myself here as well. We trust him, we release things to him, and then we receive that perfect peace that only comes through Messiah Yeshua. So that's all for today. Uh, I hope it's it's been a blessing to you. Um, and I'm just going to open up the microphone. Anyone wants to share anything, please do so. If you want to add to that, please add to that. And then we'll have a time of prayer after the final praise and worship song. So I'll just stop recording.